asking. So, um, yeah, we've got a wonderful surprise um you know for you this evening uh, but just before we we spring the surprise um we started our conversation on public health two weeks ago and um, we continue this week we will be looking at the social determinants of health and and when we speak of the social determinants of health we're talking about the non-medical factors that significantly influence health outcomes. Now, these factors, uh, they encompass the conditions in which, uh, you know, we are born, we grow, we work, we live, and age, as well as the broader forces and systems that shape our daily lives. Yeah. So this is what we'll be looking at this evening. And of course, it is a pleasure as always to welcome all our viewers on GBN television, channel 711, our friends on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, and also our listeners on K105 FM. Folks, this evening, after a few weeks, um, maybe month, two months, I am Delighted, elated to welcome back to Doctor and Call, Dr. Sonia Nixon. Doc, good evening. It is such a pleasure. Um, we missed you very, very, very much. Um, we know you um, you went through a difficult period with um, you know the loss of your mom and all of that. Um, and we're happy that you're back with us. Good evening and welcome. Well, thank you. Um... I'm happy to hear that you missed me. Um, I really missed the parting with our population. So good evening, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Who had birthday? Happy Easter. And all the things that I've missed. I know we've also lost some of, like myself, we've lost some of our friends and relatives. We've had a lot of stuff happening in Grenada. But we have a lot of good things. We've had Independence 50th anniversary, 50th anniversary that was celebrated, really celebrated by mm -hmm. the entire population. We had um, Intercall. We had primary school sports, high, um, secondary school sports, Intercall. Um, character games. Um, champs, um, character games. We've had a lot of things that celebrated, and I've seen parishes celebrate. I live in Northeast St. George's, and we celebrated 50 people who in some way had contributed towards us getting towards independence, and who st other people who are alive and still contribute towards the, um, towards Grenada's growth and development as an independent nation. Do you know that we, we're the 10th youngest, 10th smallest nation in the world? Um, Tenth? There are only there are only nine smaller independent nations than us. Okay. Oh yeah, independent. Right. Okay. I'll just. So, <laughs> I miss. I miss that things, word. No, yeah. we doing things, yeah. and like I said, we're going up, 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 and it has to be done collectively. But like you said, you started speaking about public health. Um, you know, a healthy nation is a wealthy nation, and so we have to. We can't forget the very important component that is health. Um. And so I really would like to, us to, con to, to continue this conversation simply because um, we need to understand what is our role as, as people in our society. How do, we, how do we make ourselves healthy and how do we make our country better? How do we make ourselves more productive? All those things are going to, to being healthy. This is a good time to look at it. Um, the other the other determinants, apart from the social determinants, there are commercial determinants like how does access to cigarettes make us smoke? Yeah. How does being able to buy medications or not living in a in a in a blockaded country allow us to find medications? How does um, being able to travel? freely make us be able to get how does development of policy that makes us um make people not send the the the, the stuff that it, that they're throwing away dumping mm -hmm. foods medications <clears throat> whatever it is other other things that may actually make our um our population ill how do policy and laws hmm? 
make make us stay well those are the commercial determinants how do how does our government recognize that hey we have to ban um the importation of vape vaping equipment one of the one of our biggest potential problems as tobacco has lost its war big tobacco how does the government um ensure that there are policies that prevent um the importation and the free entry of vape and of free use of vaping of vaping products among our children those are some of the commercial determinants do they even recognize that these things are negative for us and what must be done in order what laws you know in place um how do the tobacco trade laws influence um us being able to or not to allow vaping products to come into our country so there are a lot of things that we can talk about and we each i'm, I'm going to urge everybody like i did last year learns so one thing apply to your family but also learn how you can contribute towards making our nation overall a healthier place by understanding why the government makes certain decisions why certain decisions are not made why is it that we have to push for for certain policies and certain behaviors how we need to use our the, the resources that we have as limited as they are can we get better understanding what we should advocate for what we should eliminate etc cetera, etc cetera. and we learn this as we go along because the truth is everybody has a responsibility to make a decision as to what will happen for the health and well-being of our country yes indeed you know doc interestingly as you mentioned the smoking and the vaping um earlier this evening um there was a story on the bbc um, and, and I just want to share the caption. It says, MPs back smoking ban for those born after 2009. And, and these measures were championed by the, by the, the, um, uh, the Prime Minister, um, Rishi Sunak. Um, and although it came under opposition, but um, it, it, it survived. So in England, um, anyone born after 2009, um, you know, there is a move to ban smoking. And, and that um, is one of the best news I've heard. And I think uh, maybe we need to pay attention. These are some of the things that we need to pay attention to and, and pattern because it's important, yeah. you know. Sometimes we we make reference to other countries in the world as it relates to other things. But this one in particular, I think we need to definitely follow, um, you know. So, and I'm, and I'm sure Citizen Ruler would not mind us following the 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 <laughs> <laughs> following the the colonialists that, that, um, along those lines. <laughs> so I'll tell you something. In relation to the whole issue of um, banning tobacco, so they discovered that doctors in the UK were dropping dead. This is years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Male doctors in particular were dropping dead, having heart attacks and dying. And when they looked back, they recognized that the vast majority, very, very large majority of those, of those men smoked. And so they started their men's health study because they, they had a, a, a group to do a study, a type of group that you can always find, right? That kind of similar in activity or how they are phys physically, et cetera. And that is how they started the research on men's health. And that is where the link between smoking and heart attacks and all the cardiovascular problems came up. So um, the Brits know what they're talking about. They yep. know their experiences. We don't need to experience that. We need to take from them because that is extrapolated. We know that. You know, if that happened in England, that, that same thing will happen to us. Mm -hmm. So I am I laud them, I applaud them, and I hope when it comes to us talking about vaping, because if you understand the philosophy of vaping, in in the early 2000s, um, the whole introduction of delivery of nicotine by, by, by this heated mechanism, you pulled up and you got... Um, you had nicotine in a in a thing it was really in a in a container, right? Once you pull it, heat it up, and you got this nicotine. It was really meant to help people to stop smoke. That was the original, um, and still remains the only legal implicate only legal indication for the use of vape. Just like when people use an um, narcotics. Um, they they get medications like methadone and suboxone, right? Um, for 
Just can't remember. Anyway, use of narcotics. So get patients who use narcotics off it. Mm -hmm. They use drugs like methadone and suboxone that they keep decreasing until the persons lose their dependence and 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 they don't have the need to use those medications anymore. Right. Which are in themselves narcotics, which you can control, which you give them in, in measured doses mm -hmm. and you keep decreasing, 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 decreasing until the persons are able to survive. Of course, you need um, psychological support, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Rehabilitation, whatever it needed for people who use substances. Um, the bottom line is that that is what vapes were intended for, to help mm -hmm. people who come off nicotine through tobacco use to um, to be able to to um, to stop smoke. Well, yes, yes. But... So what happens with that? What happens with that? So... Um, Yes, there's a little bit of nicotine, but it doesn't have all the other toxins that cause cancer and stuff. But nicotine has its challenges. It hardens your arteries. It still causes hypertension and uh, and and make you have heart attacks and all the rest, right? And it's highly, 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 highly addictive, very addictive. That is why after you smoke one, two cigarettes, you're ready to smoke a third and you buy a pack mm -hmm. on, the, on the fourth day. Um, so nicotine is, sorry, nic nicotine is highly addictive and... Um, we have to get. If we give our children just nicotine, it may not cause the cancers and stuff as other components of to, of to, of cigarettes, tobacco in as in as it's in the component as it as in as it is in cigarettes, right? But they will still eventually because of that taste for nicotine that is uh, they will end up buying cigarettes. So what we just what we know is that the um, when big tobacco, as we call them, the big tobacco companies could not fight the evidence that showed that tobacco is bad for us, that it gives us strokes and causes us to have strokes and heart attacks and premature death and almost every single cancer that occurs. When that happened, we um, they decided they had to change their they had to change their mechanism of getting the market. What they have done, they've basically bought out other little vape systems. Um, they probably own most of those systems that other people have started. Um, what, if, what are they doing to our children? I'm talking their children in primary school here who use vapes. And parents don't think it's anything. Oh, it's just nice and they're enjoying it. There are a couple of things. One, this thing mash up your lungs. Not a word. Think about smoking hot. Keep on inhaling hot air. It breaks up your lungs. And the kids who have survived the, the challenges will tell you, don't use that stuff. It's not good for you. Mm -hmm. Right? And at the same time, you take it in small dose of nicotine. What they do, they flavor it with nice things like strawberry flavors and yes. watermelon and bubble gum and lemonade and all the crap. And you think, oh, we're just inhaling this wonderful thing and it's entertaining, but you're killing yourself. You're also setting yourself up for becoming a tobacco user. So big tobacco knows what they're doing. They're just waiting for you to start working and so buy tobacco. Right, right. So um, that being said, um, uh, this evening we're looking at the social determinants of health. And um, just to so, sort of... Mm -hmm. Before we go into that, I want us to look at what is what is a, a perfect health system, eh? Yes, let's just that's say, important, yeah. Let's say, let's just say we can have a good health system. I, I just want to share with you a couple of points, right? Um, and the World Health Organization does does have some blocks, some some areas it thinks are unnecessary to be developed. And every 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 jurisdiction, every country, right, region, whoever it is, will determine what is more important for you according to where you are. Okay. Um, leadership and government and governance. How well does your leadership, your government, your whatever it is, your the governor of your town, whoever it is, right? How well do they have? Do they have? Do they understand the needs of the population? What? How much do they invest? How do they structure the health, the health system in order that everybody has equal access? Because remember that health is a right. Health care is a right that must be afforded by the World Health Organization Convention. Health and well-being must be afforded to all people on earth. Okay? That is a right. It's a right given to you by your citizenship on earth. The people who lead countries therefore have a responsibility to give, to deliver that right. Plus, governance how do you manage it 
do you make sure that you have people who understand again what are the needs how do you leave it? Are you going to just have one hospital in Grenada? Or is it necessary to have Princess Mal Princess Alice to do primary? Do you have a helicopter system that gets people and opponent ideas in people's head? That gets people out of Caracu to come to St. George's? Do you have a post tertiary more than just surgery and stuff? Do you have more sophisticated a burn unit? Uh, oncology um uh, radiation therapy those are the things right um urgent dialysis whatever it is how do you how do you who leads and who delivers based on a necessary on, on the people so let's say that was okay um we we need to have also delivery of care so you can all have all those things in the best hospital in the world, most outfitted, blah, blah, blah. Let's say, let's say our health centers. You have a good health center um, with all the equipment that's necessary. You have GOV, which is probably an example. Um, can the people in GOV go and get all the vaccines? Do the nurses understand? Do we have enough nurses? Are the nurses properly trained? Or are they just, you know, some people who are just there? Do they have up-to-date information? Can they use the, the, um, the sophisticated equipment that's there, right? Do people, can, can people get it? Can anybody get it, right? Is the service always available? Bob is, and, and St. John um, and St. Mark, a little isolated from the rest of from St. George's. Um, can I go and at least have my situation stabilized, right? So those are things. And uh, what are the barriers? Uh, what are the barriers? Um, is it cost effective for the people? Can people afford it? Is, the, is, it, is it efficient? Is it, you know, um, do they only allow people who live in Guav and St. Mark's people could have to wait till tomorrow morning? Those kinds of things, right? And of course, does it reach the needs of the people of St. John? Let's say the children in St. John were having asthma at this time of the year because of all the, all the Sahara dust. Does the system have enough nebulizations? Do we have enough medications that we could manage them in the day and have the asthma as control? All of those things, right? That is delivery of service. What do people need? Are they getting it? All right, so we have that. Who finances it? Financing is the other component. So we have leadership and governance, um, service delivery, and now we have financing. In our environment, government tends to service, but do we have people com um, contributing to a national health service, right? To a national health insurance. Do we have that? Um, or do we depend on outside funders? We still wait for PAHO to give us some money. We still wait for the EU. We still wait for some other. We don't have, we don't, we don't contribute uh, as there was a, a national insurance. So we still have to depend on the budget, the once a year budget, regardless of what our needs are, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say that was okay, however, that we had a way that we paid into an insurance system, we had a national health insurance, so there was universal health care, everybody had access to health, whatever your needs were, they were met, and there was a way to pay for it. That's health financing. And then, um, oh, oh, we also had USAID. Do we have a proper health and workforce? Um, if we have, we have a lot of people with hypertension and diabetes. Do we have people who know how to manage it? Are they trained? Are we following the protocols? Uh, do we know the protocols like um, the HEARTS initiative? Do we know the diabetes management thing? Do we know the asthma management? Do we know, do, are we following World Health Organization's, uh, are staff trained to follow World Health Organization standards for managing for, for vaccinations? Are we up to date? Are we doing what is required on a global level, right? Do, do we have enough health workers in the community, people who go out and help old people with their wound management, who teach them how to get their, who take, te ensure they have their diabetes, who teach them foot care. Do we have people who offer foot care when I go to the clinic, who um, help with wound care, who and who teaches, who teach our mothers in the antenatal clinics how to take care of the baby, how to breastfeed, ensure that the teeth are properly done. You know, are we, do we have enough dentists on the, in the island? Do we have enough dentists to prevent our children from having, 81% of our children from having cavities? Is there, um, do they know how to do sealants and all the rest of it, right? And uh, do we have medical, um, first, do we have medical products? We talk about, do we have a 
MRI scan. Why don't we have an MRI scan or, 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 or do we have a PET scan? That's kind of hanging out more. Do we need to have a PET scan? Or do we have access to a PET scan? Is there one for the East Caribbean that people can, from the Eastern, from the Oasis, can go and get an access? Like how we have um, access to radiation therapy in Antigua. There's an under, there was an understanding. You know? So do we have access um, to the medical products? Um, are we for, are we up to date to the technologies? Do we have vaccines? Okay, I see they just added to the MMR. They just added, just recently, just this week, it's been in the news that they added to MMR, which we all have to get measles, mums, and rubella. Rubella being um, German measles. They've just now added um, chickenpox. Okay, because those those are diseases that are preventable. Those are diseases that we know if our children get them, they can have problems. The people who now have shingles can tell you why they wish they could, they had a vaccine, okay, that could prevent um, chickenpox and subsequently shingles because they're caused by the same virus. And shingles occur later in life. It's extremely painful, right? And it's always there with you, almost almost impossible to attenuate, to, to cancel out, to even relieve the symptoms, right? So, and of course, how do we take notice, health information systems, how do we take notice? How do we keep a, a tabs on how many people are seen? What are the challenges we see? What are we seeing? So let's say we got diabetes under control. Do, how, do we have information? Are we still treating people? Are we still investing so much money in diabetes as, and that's not, no longer necessary? Do we have as many loss of limbs? Do we do we need as many as much insulin, or do people do better on the newer diabe uh, the newer anti diabetic medications? Do we have um, uh, our, our nutrition is sufficient for what we require? Right, those are questions that we have. When we have all of that, then we have a good health system. So we need to look and see what are the other things on the side that can mitigate, and that is where the social determinants come in. Right. But okay? just before just so, before we move to a, a quick question. What about the the general attitude of our trained medical personnel? Well, that's part of that comes in as per personnel. Um, are they do they understand? Do they speak the language? Are they professional in their behavior? Sorry, the dogs are around me a little kind of crazy tonight. Um, we have a dog who that walks through a community and creates all this chaos. I'm sorry. Um, are the the are doctors trained properly trained? Do we have because I have seen quacks work in hospitals where I've worked, right? And they, they see the most efficient, but they don't have any training. Um, are we employing the correct physicians for our needs? Are they properly trained? Are they culturally appropriate? Do they speak the language? Do they understand? Do they communicate properly with our patients? Do they understand why they are there? And those are the things. In other words, are they trained generally? Because a physician who's properly trained for his environment will understand why people why speak different to people in such as from different to people in Cariapu, from people in St. George's, from people who are highly educated, from people to from people to from people who are um uh, are less educated. Why is why you treat men differently? Why you have to have different patients to your males, right? Um, how do people express themselves? Those cultural things are very, very important in order for us to have a, a, a great um healthcare system. Attitudes should be very close related to to ethics and morals. So are we ensuring that our doctors do ethics training every year? What are the ethical standards? How does the medical council um, ensure that appropriate ethical standards are, 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 are thing? Is it, is, is a medical council ready to deal with that kind of challenge? Right. So, um, and later on, I will, I will, I will come back to that. But I think it's important now that we, we go to the social determinants okay. and and share with our listeners and viewers um, the importance. And and um, let me just uh, sort of identify a few of them. Um, one, access to care, of course, in this case, healthcare. Um, our environment, our family, our housing, our culture. Education, gender, mm -hmm. social support, 
and income and you spoke about this earlier so these are some of the social determinants maybe the key ones and under that um we may have some other areas that we can look at and and so doc um maybe we can start with well um in your in your little introduction i think you touched quite a bit on access to care um so maybe we can start with our environment which is very very important you mean the physical environment as yes. the climate and yes. water and all of that? Yes, yes, so environment, there was surroundings. Um, in right. fact, in fact, only today I saw a report, um, I think I shared it with you, as it relates to dengue, um, you know, how much people in the world are actually exposed to that, you know, and... Um, and more. And, and it's going to grow. It's going to grow. Mm -hmm. So we have been seeing, for example, okay, if we have a, a, that perfect utopic health system, all of those things may not exist. But it also may, considering so many changes in climate that we don't really have control over. So do you know that already now in April, we have already surpassed the the highest reading. We, we're in the middle of April. Today's the 16th, right? Mm -hmm. And we already surpassed the highest reading for April last year. And 2023 was the hottest year in known human history yes, right in recorded yep. human history so it means we're beyond so it means that we're extremely hot one drop of water fall mosquito lava are going to re-expand and come back right but then again there are lots of other things that are related to, to to climate that is not just dengue and um so it doesn't rain we get where does our water come from in grenada Surface, right? Yeah, yeah, mainly our rivers. Mm -hmm. Did you see the color of the water in the pipe recently? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost looks like bear. Okay, and I don't think it's that Nawasa doesn't want to. It's just that we have surface water, and if you look and you see the amount of Sahara dust that we have, it's probably almost impossible to filter out all of water in time to deliver to the hundred thousand of us here. Okay. It means that we have to be aware that there is something that we also need to do because um, there's the probability of getting disease, just taking in all the toxins that come in the water to start with, right? Just all the dust that comes, what it brings from wherever it comes, we don't know. And like tonight, I was listening to this lecture on, on, on the environment and air quality and stating that there are things in the air that we don't even know what they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? There are things we have not yet determined, and we don't know what they can do to us, but they're there. Okay? They're there. So, what am I getting water at all? Do I have water? When I see a patient in my office, when I see a patient in my office, I ask, where do you live? Do you own your own home? Those are social determinants, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, are you married? Or do you live with a, with a stable partner? How many children do you have? What are your children's ages? Um, what, do they go to school? What level of education do you have? All of those things that determine who is this person in front of me. Because let's, let's just imagine you came to my office who make $300,000 a year. I know you wish. But um, if you came to my office and you had the same situation as Mr. Mr. Joe, who has eight children, and lives in a two-bedroom house, a two-room house, um, still get water out of a drum. There are lots of other things. If he had a, if you had the same lesion on your skin, I'd want to know what you do, Mr. Joe, what, you know, um, where you get water from to bathe. Do you go down to the river? Is the river contaminated as the St. John's River? Um, do you understand me? Circumstances under which people live that contribute to their well-being or not. Um... I can say, oh, what have you been doing? You've been playing carnival, you've been hanging out with your friends and playing dominoes in the hot in the night. And you say, yeah, and I sweat and say, but the truth is under my go home. I don't, I'm so tired, I can't be. I'm all too drunk to go to, to go into the show. I just go to bed. And you know, oh, when I'm playing lawn tennis or I'm playing um, squash, which you probably will do. Mr. Joe don't even know what to squash, right? Um, sometimes I keep my, between going, between the game and going home, I have a drink with my friends. And most times my t-shirt gets dry on me, right? And that predisposes you to get in trouble, right? But Mr. Joe just don't have a lot of water. 
right? And he probably working out there in the hot sun as well. And the clothes wet and dry and wet and dry. And he come home and do one little shower. You can do three showers. Use a different soap, right? So all those little things, right? Wherever does your patient live? What is the environment like? What is his access to water, right? Does he have running water? Does he have a latrine? Is the latrine always covered or are there always mosquitoes in there? Are there cockroaches? Do you see rats and mice running around? Hmm? Um, well, we don't have venomous snakes, so I wouldn't talk about that. But um, what is there? Are there rats and mice and cockroaches and flies and all the rest of it? That because you do not have, you do not have high-borne water into your house, which I don't think is much of a problem these these days in Grenada. But there's still a few people who may not have water inside the house. Okay, they don't have a what we call a water closet, a flushing toilet. They may have a a, a well-kept pit latrine but they don't have a flush and toilet. So that's where the whole environmental thing comes from. Um, do your children with asthma, you, you burn coals next door to your house or the people where you burn coals, they're always cutting on the trees. Yes, they um, do. Is, it lo- is, it lo- is it a lot of smoke? Who smokes? Your grandmother still smoke a pipe with, with tobacco from the stuff? Are you smoking or the boys outside smoking weed and all of those particle dust from the smoke, right? Just smoking cigarettes. Or do you live in a house where somebody used to smoke and there's all this smell of smoke in the carpet and in the walls and in the bed, um, you, know, the, you know, the clock side of, of the divans, right? Um, all of those things, that's tertiary, that's tertiary smoke, okay? Um, is, that, is that how your home is? Those are the social determinants. Maybe you can't afford to live elsewhere. Maybe the bed you have come from four generations where your grandma used to sit in a room and smoke a pipe. Maybe somebody used to cook on a cold pot, on a cold pot right outside the door, and all of the dust is still there in the house. Okay? Maybe you live alone and can't move very much, and your house doesn't get as clean as is possible. So those are the things we have to consider when you come over, when you speak to the environment in which people live. Okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then why take so long to come, Mr. Joe? Aye, doctor. You see, I live on top of a hill, or I have to cross a river, and a lot of rain was falling. And when ra- when the river come down, I don't have a bridge to my house, I can't get over. Or, you know, the bus doesn't come up where I live, and the, my, my knee and them hurting me so much I could hardly walk. Nobody wants to come the road because the road is bad. Those are the things about your living environment that you have to consider. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, how much vegetable and food do you eat, Mr. Joe? A whole lot, because... Um, the land is not mine and it's kind of bad and I can't walk up and down because it's kind of hilly and all of those things. Those come in among the social determinants as for your environment mm-hmm. in which you live. Yeah. And and um, another very important one is family. How How is family, um, what is the role of family here um, as a social determinant? And, and, and I'd like to bring up that point specifically in relation to mental illness. The numbers show that when you have family who supports you, if you're mentally ill, you do a lot better, right? Their families, you see them, they, they, uh, they, they uh, you know, agricultural, rural, agrarian people, farmers, and they have a mentally ill child, whether the child is, um, whether they have learning disability, whether they have Asperger's, whether they have schizophrenia, bipolar illness, you see them together, their family, but they survive. And when they're picking cocoa, they're picking cocoa. When they're cutting grass for the donkey, they're cutting grass. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. When they're picking nutmegs, when they're cleaning the ground to plant lettuce and tomato or corn and peas, as we will soon do for thing, the person is there. But they sit and they have lunch with their families, as opposed to other environments where people send away their families because they don't want them to be around. They don't want people to know that they have a mentally ill relative. Or sometimes they just can't afford to care for a mentally ill person because the person is very manic and very difficult to control or just want to live on the street, right? We know that where family is involved, there is actually better outcomes for health. Mm -hmm. We know that, for example, when people have surgery, Instead of staying in the hospital, hospital doesn't want you to stay nowhere in the world, want you to stay for more than three days. But people get better when they go home to their families, if their family go to them, that is, right? People get better when they go home to their family. If somebody understands the need and family can afford to help you, right? Um, people do a lot better in the presence of family. But family also comes with attitude. Um, is your family informed? Are they sufficiently informed? Do they have other thoughts that will say, well, and I'll and I tell the story after. Well, I don't know. It looks like they do her. 
<laughs> so that's the thing. I don't like dead people, okay? My, mm-hmm. my nurses have laughed at me when I have to go to pronounce a dead when I worked in internal medicine as a young physician coming to medical school. Because, and I worked here ER and it was a little easier because people just died while you were there. But I worked in the ER for like seven years and in that emergency room in the casualty, not here. And um, there's this guy who had a kind of semi-defunct, not work, um, undertaker service. What they did was just preserve bodies that needed to, they had the facilities, but they did not offer services of last preparation and burial and stuff. So they kind of house a lot of the cases for people who are like the paupers and people who, who might have to get post-mortems and stuff. And this guy would always come dress it up with a shroud. It looked like a, like a, he looked like a, 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 a farmer. And he came to the emergency room and said, Dr. Nix, I have a patient, uh, I have somebody who died in the country. And he gave me this history of this 18-year-old girl who had had a baby and who started having a fever. And a lot of women get septic. She had a baby at home. And if you're not properly attended, you know, you can always have parts of, products of conception, pieces of um, placenta or blood that doesn't come out properly remain. And you can get toxic, you get poisoned. And that, that, it has happened. We're, that's why we here in Grenada, all deaths, all births must be attended by somebody who is trained. And there the are facilities in the community where people can go and have a baby, but most people are born in a hospital where you have, um, where you should have a trained person taking, a trained personnel in general, more than one person taking care of you. And he said, the girl had his baby like about eight days ago and she started to develop a fever and her family would not carry her to the doctor because they thought somebody would be her. Oh. So that's one of the negative connotations. Now she's 18 years old and she's sick. She can't make those decisions for herself, but she's become too sick. And I tell you, I don't touch dead people. <laughs> I went back into, I went because I know what she was going to say, ah, oh, this gentleman is gone. And I went back into the ER and found my, found my glove and my stethoscope because the girl's fever was so high. She'd mm-hmm. been dead for hours and she just looked like she was sleeping. She still felt warm. And died at 18 simply because her family did not understand that she needed care. Mm -hmm. So that's where family comes in and very important. Family would advocate for you. They will decide what you need. They'll, why? You see people go hustle and they cuss and go on. Not because they want to be rude, but because they're just anxious and they want to make sure that their families are well taken care of. That they help. You know, family overseas will send you money so you can go to the doctor. You can have your surgery. Family is very important. The integrity of the family is also very important, right? Um, to ensure that the kids have their vaccines, to make sure that the, the children are eating properly, to you know, to to hear what the teacher has to say about what happens to the child in school. Is the child sitting just quietly and not paying attention? Is the child having seizures? You know, the thing called absences where the child sits, and for the minute or so he may be sitting quietly, not doing anything. He's actually having a seizure, and he's not engaged with his reality. So family comes in as very important in giving support and advocating and ensuring who, who takes care of you after you have a baby, who takes care of you after you have surgery, who takes care of you when you're dying from cancer or when you're just dying. It's family, and that's very important. The integrity of family is very important. Right. Um, so our environment, our family, um, what mm. about where we live? Housing is another very important factor, and it's closely linked, well, of course, to family and environment. Because yes. if, you, if your housing is in an environment that is not conducive, then it can seriously impact um, the, 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 the public health, um, you know, issue. So, and that's a very important point, because um, you, you kind of don't want your children falling to the floor when the, um, when the plywood break, right? You don't. Um, not. You want to make sure that rain don't wet you when you're sleeping in the night. You want to make sure that there's privacy and... Um, and comfort. The children, they kind of pass the age of sleeping on, on coconut bag and that foolishness, okay? Um, but is your house safe? Will, will, will a little wind huff and puff and blow it down, right? When the river comes down, would it take away one of the one of the posts? Is it close to the river or far away? Is it built on the river bank and, and, and safely so? Do your children stand a chance of, your little children stand a chance of running away and going and get and drown in? Um, but then there's the electricity. You know, reach a point where you don't want you want to make sure that you can decrease the risks of your house burning down, right? 
because you have electricity that your children can study because those are things because education comes in here as another very very important um contributor to well-being um is is your house built safely built to standards okay which your children come home and find rats and snakes and cockroaches because you the house is not properly built you have all kind of garbage around which is environment but um that, that that's the safety that a home brings okay um or do you have to take turns sleeping i know environments today 2020 where families are so overcrowded that people have to take turns and sleep right so the young people will go out and they sleep early and then the other younger the 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 small ones and the older ones will get to sleep in the in the, hour, in the other hours simply because there's not enough home. So, running water is considered an essential. Having electricity, run water inside your indoor plumbing, right? Um, how do you cook? Are we still using fireside? No, thank you. That is not good for us. All that I said. If you can see smoke. It has things in it called particle matter that you particulate matter, okay. mm -hmm. all that particle dust that we are inhaling. What happens to your ceiling? Does it does you do we experience scattered showers when rain comes, or is there rat droppings and other things and roach droppings that will trigger off your children's asthma? Um, is it do you have dust? Too much dust that accumulates. Is it very hot? If you leave your, your grandmother at home in the day. In a, in a roof that's not high enough with with, 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 a, with a zinc roof and no ceiling. She's going to fry in there. She's going to talk foolishness when you get home because she's going to be dehydrated. So your housing, the quality of housing must have a certain basic standard. It must be built for access to everybody. Can you, do your children have to climb up the step? I mean, like climb because one tread is missing or two tread is missing and run, a stick, um, run, the, run the risk of breaking their legs or even old people. The grandmother falls, she breaks her hip. Sayonara, she goes to Jesus. So those are the things. It's my hope. I'm not asking people to have luxurious home. I'm asking them to have a comfortable, safe, well equipped. You can have electricity and water. If you want to get telephone and Wi-Fi, that's okay. And TV, that's okay. But basically electricity, water, indoor plumbing preferably, right? And and that kind of hygiene. Um, is it kept clean? Can you wash your clothes regularly? Those are the things that are um, very important. If you have to light candle and go to the night, please don't go to night and leave your children with your candle lighting if you don't have electricity. Because we've known how our children have died. They get curious. We go in the morning, they can't, in the night, they can't find mommy. They call one another. They out there, they play with a candle. Everybody play with candle, candle, sperm, we the call candle it, right? Sperm, yes. <laughs> and, right. And, kid, and kids tip the candle. People who are blind, um, why are they using a candle? Who don't see very well? Right? I don't know if you want candle in, want a light in the night. Get a flashlight. Um, right? So if you might want to go to use the toilet or you might want to use the pail, whatever it is in the middle of the night. Um, are you are you well enough to uh, do you have the facility for getting the light that you require? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is your home safe? Is your home clean? And above all, is your home safe from natural disaster? When a hurricane comes, can you stay there? Or do you know that it's not safe enough so you can go to the to the shelter? Are you informed about those things? The state of your house, mm -hmm. okay. right? Um, and what about what about um, culture? How does culture or how is culture a social determinant of health? Because the culture determines how we live. Mm -hmm. um, your culture, the common beliefs of the people in the community in which you live. So if everybody believes that, um, everybody believes that if you have a if you if you start vomit at three o'clock in the morning because somebody obey you, if if you believe that you're not supposed to go to the doctor just because you're having a cough for the last three weeks, nothing is wrong with that, right? That it must come, or they believe that they can only give you bush medicine. I'm not telling people not to use bush medicine. I'm saying you have to know what you're using, right? You have to know how much to use, and you have to know when it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. So those are the things that 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 come in as part of determinants. How do all of these things work in our favor or against us? The things we believe, right? Is it obia? Is it um, somebody trying to guzzle you? Is it correct? Is it not correct? In 1920, we used to do that. It doesn't work anymore. That doesn't happen anymore. Okay? It's not proven. It's supposed to work. Like how I got lizard in co coconut water for my asthma that I never had. But... <laughs> 
those are the things um, that you have to determine. And it has to do, and I want to tie that with education, because we know that when people have low education levels, that they actually have a greater chance of not, um, of, of not doing well um, health-wise. They don't read. They get information by word of mouth, which has come down 10, 10 people. Um, they don't understand. They don't believe. They, they don't trust. Okay, and oftentimes they don't. When when they when they do seek care, it's often late and severe. It's late and it's severe. So we have to make sure that these the people who need care, who don't who are not educated, we have to take them into the fold, and we have to ensure today that our children are properly educated so they can appreciate all the evidence for their well being. Okay, and and it's very close related to our culture. Yeah, we feel we have to drink. You don't have to drink alcohol. You could go to a party and don't have any alcohol. You're not going dead. Okay? People have to understand it's going to take a lot of changing in our, in our, in our, in our cultural practices. And there's still a lot of cultural practices that are, that are not healthy, right? But, you know, like passing the baby over smoke to get rid of mal joe and all the foolishness. Um, and I call it foolishness. I think it is. I think it puts a child more at risk. We know there's a thing of the Jews... Um, and kissing the babies on the mouth, and old people kissing babies on the mouth. I tell you, don't kiss the baby on the mouth. We give them croup. We give them whooping cough, and can kill the newborn baby who yet who has not yet received his his, his or her vaccine. Vaccines. So those are the things. The whole culture thing of um, some cultures, they don't want to take, they don't want to vaccinate their children. And a lot of people who don't vaccinate their children know that if they don't vaccinate their children, ah, they have all these children who already have vaccines. So my child will be safe within the herd. Okay, those are called new, new cultural practices we have. All right, so the culture of giving our children bad food, ramen. I, I saw a video, I really should have sent it to you. A video of how ramen is produced, and I, I, was, I, was, I was too traumatized to even talk. I just moved to the next video, right? We give our children ramen. Ramen is damn cardboard, excuse the French. Ramen is cardboard, right? Um, it's not good, there's no nutritional value, except that when they, they look a pack of salt and they give it and put it in the ramen. Is it, it has too much sugar? Sorry, it has too much salt and too much fat. Okay, so guess what? And bad fat at that, so it's bad for us. We insist because all other children are carrying a, a box juice at school. Box juice are not good for our children. It has too much sugar. Look at the content. We give our children sodas. We take our children out to party. Take them out, and we have to go buy whatever fried foods. We have a party. We have a we have a a, a, a outdoor party. You know, you go to the park, you go to everywhere to a function, and it's only fried chicken and chips. Hello? Potato chips makes your sugar fly up like anything. Why are we doing breadfruit chips if you're going to do chips? Why are we doing dashing chips? Why are we doing sweet potato chips? Why do we always have to fry everything and fry it in cheap oil that converts into cholesterol very quickly and make our system and make our children sick? Right, and they get the habit. They get the habit of eating all the salty foods, all the packaged foods. That's a cultural practice that is bad for us, and determines socially whether or not we're going to have a perpetuation of diseases, and especially chronic diseases. Right. Mm -hmm. Plus, we don't know what toxins all of those things bring into our life. The all the all the um the preservatives, the things they have to put into there, right, to make to make the things last on the shelf. Right. Are we going to follow the leader? Are we, are we going to get what you used to get? What you used to get for break? Mango, mango, and ripe, ripe fig, plum. Yeah, and, and and half of the time you have to harvest it on the way to school. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, actually, you know? no, I, I I think we should use the right term. We have to pass on thief the neighbor plum, thief to plum a neighbor yeah, yeah, or, or something like that. And, 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 and in those do. days, that was good. Um, you know, thief, the <laughs> it's all different. You go to school, you pass, um, you pick a, your thief or two plum or your uh, two mango. Mm. Or you watch, you watch your plum in the morning for when you go home at night. Definitely, definitely. Oh. But, I, I, Doc, another very, very important one, and I think, and I know you would um, love to speak on this one, the issue of gender as a hmm. social determinant. That is that yeah. is something... So we know, we, we know from the beginning that women are more accepting. I feel like my phone is not going to last very much longer. So we probably can take a break after this. Yes. Mm -hmm. We know that women are most ac more accepting of, um, of care. They will seek care, whether it's physical, emotional, social, gender-based, whatever it is. Okay. 
Um, so women go to the doctor, they go care, or they talk to the girlfriends if they have problems. Men not so. Men turn to other forms to, to alleviate their problems. Um, men use more substances, are more likely. Unfortunately, young girls are more likely to drink strong alcohol, so I think a lot of the things are going to change. Um, so men die earlier. They take Men take more risks. They drive fast. They smoke. Um, they smoke noxious substances. They take chances. Okay, they would eat something they never ate before. They say, "Oh, that's going, that's going to do your ex," and they do it. They speed. They um, they dive into rivers that are going that going down fast. They do all kind of stuff, right? But as far as health seeking is concerned, men are not necessarily the primary ones. Not all men, but most men are not. Okay, men are less generally less in educated about health and wellness and not understanding, especially our men who have less education, academic education. So that's one of the groups that we're gonna to have to work with. That that's one of the groups because they're at greater risk than other than other um other groups. Mm -hmm. Women on the other hand will do their pap smears, get a breast examination, once you remind them they'll try, once they have the facility they will, right? Um and they'll go to the doctor and get a pressure checked and live a little longer. That's why men die younger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I want to tie in this with a sort of um, a, 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 a sub determinant. So, and, and that's my own. I've, I've, I've coined that that, that phrase. No, it's also a determinant, probably because it's just not put as the main yeah, ones. Interpersonal violence as as a social well, determinant. Right. So we know that men are more likely to inflict violent um, action on another person, regardless of gender. Mm -hmm. Okay, folks, we, we're going to take a short break. We do apologize for that. We take a short break, and we will come right back. So do, do stay with us. Saturday, May 4, there will be a shift on the island as the biggest grilling fest in Grenada moves to the Big Parish. The Maggie King of the Grill Competition is at Progress Park St. Andrew. Come taste the most sumptuous creations from the grill as top chefs and food enthusiasts showcase their culinary skills. Maggie King of the Grill is a festival like no other with live soca music, fun attractions, and games for the entire family. Then from 6 p.m., get a chance to win up to $5,000 cash and bingo. Interested vendors and grillers should call 456-3454 to register. It's the Maggie King of the Grill Competition at Progress Park St. Andrew. Gates open from 12 noon. Bring your appetite and stay tuned to this station for more details. Maggie King of the Grill is made possible by Bryden and Miners, Hunts, the official barbecue sauce of King of the Grill, Rubis, Get Rubis, Get Going, Independence Agency, Agents for Swiss Products, Grenada Paper Product, Grenada Bottling Company Limited, and Waggy T Rental and Sounds. Are you looking for a reliable, affordable, and customer friendly pharmacy? Look no further than Hills and Valley Pharmacy, the nation's leading healthcare products and services provider. We are committed to serving you at convenient locations. Find an extensive and affordable selection of prescription and over the counter drugs and medical supplies at Church Street, Hillsborough, Caracou, Jubilee Street, Grenville, St. Andrew, near the bus terminal, and Halifax and Grenville Street, St. George. Our committed team is always available to offer valuable assistance for managing your health and wellness. Discover the additional benefits of our wholesale distribution on Halifax Street and our medical center on Grenville Street, where we provide in-house physiotherapy, massage therapy, doctor consultations, and eye care services. Our commitment is to satisfy all your health care needs, including competitive prices, loyalty rewards, and special discounts for seniors. Contact us at 435-6904 and WhatsApp 535-4734. Choose Hills and Valley Pharmacy. Remember, your health is our business. Have you heard about the new Softwee bathroom tissue with Total Hygiene? As hygiene and safety have taken center stage, a bathroom tissue is now manufactured with three different technologies to offer the best protection for you and your family. UVC light technology for a safe and effective disinfection process, eliminating 99.9% .9 of microorganisms. Also, production at high temperatures, killing all types of germs and bacteria. And it's pH controlled with delicate fibers 
fibers to prevent irritation for even sensitive skin. Soft Weave Total Hygiene Bathroom Tissue. Available in supermarkets and shops island-wide. Visit Soft Weave Caribbean Facebook or Instagram pages for more information. of the Grenada 50th Independence, the Royal Grenada Police Force Band presents the second annual Mother's Night Out. Mother's Night Out. The concert all going down on Sunday, May 12th from 5 p.m. at the Grenada Trade Center. Featuring live from TNT. It's crazy. It's time to come. America will have a black president. John King. June Lodge. Together with the Hitman Inspector, Valine Ned, Samantha Dixon, Alex Philip, Shane, Innocent, General PP, Kareem, Alexis, Ron Barry, the African Man, and much more. Dress code elegance. It's Mother's Night Out, the Grenada Trade Center, from 5 p.m. on Sunday, May 12. Lots of giveaways and prizes to be won. Champagne and roses on entry. You don't want to miss this amazing experience for mothers. Your tickets only $70 and are available from Kittens Pharmacy in Grand Dance and Grenville, Grenadian Optical, The Police Band House, Police Canteen. Make this a date for mothers. You know, one day I woke up and you know they painted a set of pedestrian crossing all along the streets. You know, nobody told us how to use that thing properly. I know how. You're serious? Every safe, good driver knows about these things. As a driver, you have to be very attentive. You know you're coming up close to a pedestrian cross. You start slowing down immediately, looking to see if there's any pedestrian on the side getting ready to cross. If there is, you stop on the line that is a certain distance before the crosswalk. Then you would see the pedestrian put their hands out, looking directly at you, indicating that they are going to cross. And only when you have come to a complete stop, that is when they will quickly and safely cross to the other side. And then you continue happily on your journey. Stop, look, hand out, eye contact, wait for pedestrian to cross. Then you happily continue on your journey. This message is brought to you by this group of insurance companies, the Traffic Advisory Body, and the Traffic Department. I want you to control your anger. There's a way to feel better. That's one thing to remember. No matter where you are, you can be a star. Stop and take a deep breath. And relax yourself. Saturday, May 4th, there will be a shift on the island as the biggest grilling fest in Grenada moves to the Big Parish. The Maggie King of the Grill Competition is at Progress Park St. Andrew. Come taste the most sumptuous creations from the grill as top chefs and food enthusiasts showcase their culinary skills. Maggie King of the Grill is a festival like no other with live soca music, fun attractions, and games for the entire family. Then from 6 p.m., get a chance to win up to $5,000 cash and bingo. Interested vendors and grillers should call 456-3454 to register. It's the Maggie King of the Grill competition at Progress Park St. Andrew. Gates open from 12 noon. Bring your appetite and stay tuned to this station for more details. Maggie King of the Grill is made possible by Bryden and Miners, Hunts, the official barbecue sauce of King of the Grill, Rubis, Get Rubis, Get Going, Independence Agency, Agents for Swiss Products, Grenada Paper Product, Grenada Bottle and Company Limited, and Waggy Tea Rental and Sounds.
Well, welcome back, everyone. It's uh, Dr. and Call, uh, and of course, uh, Dr. Nixon is back with us. And uh, tonight, um, for those of you who joined us late, we're discussing public health, um, looking at the social determinants. And we've looked at quite a few. We've looked at the environment, family, housing, culture, education, gender, and uh, interpersonal violence. Now, another very important uh, social determinant of health is social support. Um, if we don't have social support, because of course we all have social lives, and um, it, it, it it might be very difficult to um, function, you know, um, uh, without being part of a, a society. You know, the social aspect of things, entertainment, um, friends, um, all of that, um, very very important. So, Doc, the social support as a social determinant. You you muted. You still muted, Doc. Yeah. I'm very sorry. Yes, there we go. Mm -hmm. The whole issue of the whole issue of social support goes beyond. It. Look at yourself in a, in, a, in, a, in a circle, right? There's you, right? You as an individual. And then there is your family or the persons who you share your household with. And then there is the, 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 the way you work, you know, the, the, the little community in which you live. Then there's, there's the bigger community that you look. And then there's a whole nation. We have a whole lot of participants and people who support your systems or not. Um, so your social support is going to vary from one level. So what happens, what you can do for yourself is, is what you do for yourself. But then, how do you and your mother and your brother and your husband and your boyfriend and your children and all that, how do you relate? Um, do you live in an environment that's supportive, that understands what your needs are? Um, is there enough money for your family to get proper meal? That's one of the things you have to consider, right? How we eat. Do we, is there enough financially? And then it goes beyond. The, the, what happens in the office? What happens in, in when you work, wherever you work? Whether you're, you work in a laundry or you're a teacher or you're, you're a nurse, you're a doctor, you're... Just an ordinary person, a conductor on a bus, whatever you are, right? A cane cutter, a, a farmer, right? How do you relate to those people within that environment? And then it goes even beyond that. How does your 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 community? Do you have a community center? Um, do you have um, house church? Is there somebody who talks about health and who talks, who ensures that not they don't just take your money, you know, pastor don't just take your money on Saturday or Sunday morning, but he also ensures that in well that the well being of Everybody in the, in the community is being taken care of. When you have a death in your family or something happens, your child goes to jail, these things happen to us, what kind of support do you get? Is there enough emotional and psychological support for you? And furthermore, does the government provide services? So can I say I'm going to social development, um, or when I go to my clinic, I'm, going to, I, I'm, I'm having a problem with my partner, or I'm just having a problem with coping, with having lost my job, who takes care of me? Who can give me that kind of support I require, right? So it's, it speaks basically to not live in an isolated environment, in an environment that's buffered and supported in positive ways by those and the circumstances that surround you. Does the government provide um, relief, financial and, and emotional relief? Uh, is there housing for our seniors? Is there... Um, um, I don't even know the the, the 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 financial you know those those um, safety nets that families have. We saw recently the families in 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 Sentinel, five houses being burned. One house being burned in our community is traumatic. Much as when you have five sets of people losing their their, their everything they own except their life, thank God. Not only does it affect the people who lose their home, but the people who live around them. They need other people to come in and support them and tell them, I'll be, you'll be fine, right? Do, did people take up their local hose and try to hold the water? That's supporting your community. That's supporting the people. Do Did you make sure that um, the people who lost their house, did they have a place to sleep that night? Who turns up? Did the Red, the Red Cross turn up? Did um, NADMA turn up? Did the police turn up? Did the, the, the minister of, of, of the MP, the minister of social development, who turned up? Was the prime minister there? Did he send a message? 
If you come together and cook a big pot of rice and peas and chicken so everybody can eat at night, what is it? How do we support each other? What and plus, what are the official systems that exist, right? When when people need um need that 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 added that added support. Remember COVID? Remember how we suffered? How people couldn't go out and they couldn't women couldn't get their girlfriends to talk to men couldn't go down by the guys and play by the road and play um domino and, and, and cricket and they couldn't go and run and play scrimmage on the beach and all the stuff, right? They couldn't go walking on the beach. That was lost. People suffered. People had a lot of challenges. The, is our sister is our community structured so as to offer that? Does a community have a community center? Is there a common green space? Is there a little place where you can sit on a bench and the kids run up and down in a little space and play football? Or does um, do people come and block off the place where people sit quickly enough for and say that the beach is there? Is it all they can't go on the beach anymore? Those are the those are the things that affect us from a social standpoint. Bullying. Bullying. Do we bully each other? We bully each other in the workplace enough. Bosses bully their staff and make them feel that that they have all the power over them because I have the money. He who has the money makes the rules. Mm -hmm. But the rules must be, must be rules that are just and that encourage um, production, productivity, and that make people want to come back to work tomorrow morning. Those are the things. Those are some of the social services. Do we look out for each other? I may not talk. My mother and my neighbor may not talk, but um, if she gets sick, I should go over there and see if she's okay and make her a cup of tea. Those are those are the things. So there's there's um, there's unity. You know, at the end of the day, whatever happens must put all of us in a same at the same plane. We must have equity. So whether I am a 25 year old with six children of six different fathers, no job, don't even have my own little house. My grandmother then I get a little one room house to sleep with my children. No furniture, hardly have food, no electricity, no water. Do I have the same access to that kind of care? Do I have the same possibility that I will have support services that can make me give my children decent space to live? It's called equity. Yep, yep. And Doc, um, so 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 the last one actually that um, I want us to look at this evening, and I think um, it probably will encompass all of the others and and connect everything, um, so that we can have a good and and coming back to what you opened with, a good healthcare system. Um, we're talking about economic stability. Yes, very important. And, and if you start looking from a from a from a, an individual standpoint, I'm not going to use myself as an example. Again, I'm going to use that young woman who has six children, but that comes tied to her education, tied to the support service support system she has. Let's say she worked. She worked as a um, housekeeper. And she earned minimum wage is what three four hundred dollars for three mm -hmm. minimum wage um twelve hundred dollars well that's three hundred dollars a week oh yeah okay yeah right. a lot of people pay by week and, and you know often there are people who have a housekeeper somebody who comes and they've known her forever and they know she has six children and they know she had to buy food or pay light or you know save a little money for a susu because she wanted to buy a bed you got me, right? Mm -hmm. And they know that she really take good care of the husband shirt and pants and stuff. Yeah, they wouldn't pay the ten dollars um NIS. That's not good, right? Not at all. Right? So again, how do we function as a community? We have to ensure that we have healthcare systems that don't make us poor. And again, that's the reason why we need universal health care, where there's a pool of money, wherever it's going to come from, resources, educated people, blah, 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 services, where if I had an appendicitis and that lady with her six children had an appendicitis, that we both had the same access to care at the same time, um, that I were, not, I were not given the permission to go into the, into the operating theater before her because, you know, because the guys know me. Um, that if she were more, more unstable than I were, that she really should have access to the operating theater first. 
But from an economic standpoint, we have to ensure that we develop our countries so that people can live as well as each people. I'm not saying that everybody must have caviar and driver bins and have a three bedroom house with ultra modern with cameras and all this stuff. But I'm saying I must be able to get to work safely. I must say I must have a job that can and I must be able to take care of my basic needs. I must say that I must have a home, right? That is safe and clean and 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 um, and and and, and stable, okay? And um, that I have access to all the time, even if I rent. I must say, I must have the basic amenities that everybody has. And I must have a little money to buy ice cream too for my children, or even if it's me alone. I must feel that I can not buy here a nail and eye and bottle and all the crap that people spend the money for, but that I can have a little and I can save something, I can have a vacation. Right. That again, it comes back to that equity. And we have to develop our countries and we have to develop our healthcare system that people don't become impoverished or less impoverished or have less access because you don't have a proper healthcare system. Mm -hmm. That is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to strive to make sure that um, a universal health care is available and accessible to everyone, especially those who need it most and can't. Right. The reason why. The U, um, World Health Organization has been pushing for universal health care is because we know of people. You hear it all the time. People in the U.S. who have to sell their house, who have to sell their town. And you know people here who sell their one cow or their donkey or they sell a piece of land because they needed to have this money for their children to have surgery or, or whatever it is. We mm -hmm. must make sure that um, we live in an environment where there's economic stability so that everybody in turn can feel safe especially from a financial and economic standpoint. Yes, indeed. And, and it also impacts um, access to quality education and, and, yeah. and quality housing and, and a good environment and all of the other things that we spoke and, about. And that's, where, and that's where the whole issue of equity comes from. Mm -hmm. Everybody must have similar access, have access to the same quality standard of health and well-being, okay? Um, some people would need more support than others, right? Some people just automatically make more money. I would, as a physician, would make more money than my housekeeper, right? Mm -hmm. But she, that doesn't mean that when time comes, she can go to hospital or she can get her vaccines or she can get contraceptive advice or her children can get their teeth cleaned or her children, you know, she right. can go and get her mammogram and all the rest of it. We have to get our country to an economic state and it's a responsibility for all of us because there's some of us who think we need to take all for ourselves it's a responsibility for all of us and it's going to ask those of us who earn a little more to put a little more into the coffers for health care and say oh them people listen them people and they'll take it and say that's not how it is we're going to have to create an environment that's that's morally nice do you know what i'm saying it takes that is one of the other things how do I function from a moralistic standpoint? If I live in a social, if I live in a society, how do I contribute to the well-being of everybody in the society, right? So that there is equity, that we all can function basically at a decent level, a level that ensures that people can survive without being um, without being strangulated, quote unquote. Right. Yes, indeed. And Doc, I, I, I just want to, well, we have a caller. Let's take that call quickly and then we can summarize it. Doctor and call, good evening. Hello. Hello. Yes, good evening. How are you going, sir? Very good, very good. I think this is a very important program, but I, there's something that I notice. Take, for instance, personal responsibility for caring is lacking in society. A man may have a bad habit to drink. His wife and his children begging him to stop the habit. He continues with the habit. End up getting cancer, sick with his kidney. His children cannot go to school. He's lying down on a bed now and his whole family suffers for that. I think personal responsibility where healthcare is concerned but cannot be under stress because a lot of the problem that exists while i quite agree with the doctor we have to be community wise we have to help our brothers and be our brothers keeper a lot of well-educated people are willfully not eating well 
know that the food that they're eating is not nutritionally bent. Our wives are not learning to cook good food for their husband and their children. And when they're sick now, everybody else has to pay for their own malas. I think personal responsibility should be page number one in the development of a healthcare um, cadre that will build Grenada or build the Caribbean. We have to see ourselves wanting to be healthy. We have to see ourselves going after being healthful, healthy for our children and ourselves, rather than in the end waiting for society and government to take that responsibility for which we lacked all during our lifetime. Don't take the advice the doctor gave us. Don't take the advice society gave us. And now we lie down on our bed and we can't do nothing for ourselves and our children can't get any money to go to school. They have to suffer and go and beg for money now to take care of us. Take care of ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and Kuala. That's and, and that's a very important point, but guess what? We are kind of crazy merry-go-round already, so we'll have to get off. Someone's going to have to get off somewhere and put some common sense into this, right? And one of the fundamental things is the whole issue of education. Yeah. And I'm not talking about academic education. I'm talking about health education. We have to promote health as a very important component. And above all, preventative health care, okay? Because not because government is going to have $20 billion a year to take care of, the, of, of our health, of our healthy. Let's say that's all the budget, Right that we can do whatever we want willy-nilly. We must make sure and use it to our advantage so that we don't get sick, right? And we know that 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 preventative care is what is the way to go. Mm -hmm. That's the way the government is trying to develop it. That's how it's always been from the Alma Acta in 1970. That has been the model. We haven't followed it well all the time, but this is a good time for it to reinstate it. I know the efforts being made to reinstate it, but people, as Grenadians, we have to take advantage of the systems that exist. Physicians and nurses and other people, other healthcare providers, have to learn what is required to ensure that, to, that we have a healthy population, right? The leadership, again, I'm going back to those, to those particulars. The leadership must know what is required to have a population and, and, and a, a healthy population and must govern that system appropriately. must have people who know what I'm doing, not paying anybody because they're your friend. And I'm not saying that's what it is, but you can't just put people in situations because they're your friend, because they, they support your political view, whatever it is. You have to look for the people who know, who know what is required and put them to do the work. And the people who get there to do the work must understand that they, that's where they come for. They come to drink from it, not to come cold. So there's no politics and I suffer, I support the Red Party or the, or the Purple Party. No, we come there to our country. And if we don't have a healthy nation, we really are going to suffer, right? If we don't integrate the other things, integration of all the other, all the other components of governance. You can't have a health system that doesn't where the financial services don't understand what is required. So you must have health in, in, incorporated into the financial policies. You must have health incorporated into, into agriculture. You must have health incorporated into, into, into education, into social development, into law, into um, sports, okay? I know we had a sports um, policy developed, but it said nothing about health. Hello? Sports is not about people who run for medals. Sports is about activity and getting keeping a population active and playing um, ring a ring a roses in a community and having clap hand and shandy dandy games and and laughing and talking and playing netball and falling and bruising me and just being healthy, just going out there and do things that build a community, that do all the other things because everything is interrelated. Okay, we have to put. Um, help into every single policy that we develop in this country. Okay? Legal affairs. Who's going to ensure that the tobacco laws are passed? Who's going to ensure that the, um, the mental health laws are passed? Who's going to ensure that we have proper laws governing how we care for our people? Who's going to ensure that the, um, that the medical council laws are kept up to date? Who's going to ensure that um, we can incarcerate people who rape girls and women and boys and men, okay? That's sexual abuse and physical abuse. Who's going to ensure that they become a thing of the past? Something we, something we barely remember, okay? All of this, right? It's going to have to come thinking of the well-being, the mental, physical, and emotional well-being of the population of our country, okay? 
that is what's going to have to happen. Everybody's going to have to come together. And I understand the frustration of this gentleman, but, you know, we have to start somewhere. Thank you, Doc. We all have to start somewhere. Everybody has the same responsibility to start somewhere. Yeah, yes, indeed. So, so folks, just to, just to summarize this, um, you know, the, 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 and, and I want to share with you in summarizing um, just uh, something from one of the sites that I usually use, Medical News Today, on the issue of the social determinants. And they say that social determinants of health fall into five broad groups. Healthcare, economic stability, education, social and community life, and neighborhood. And then it is further broken down. One under healthcare, um, this group encompasses a person's access to healthcare and its quality. And the factors include access to primary healthcare, health insurance coverage health literacy. Doc, you just spoke about that right along the alley of the gentleman who called. Economic stability, which refers to the link between a person's finances and their health. Examples of factors are poverty, employment, food security, housing stability. All of these things we spoke about. Education. Um, it focuses on the connection between a person's access to education and its quality and their health. And examples include secondary education, higher education, language and literacy, childhood development, very, very important. Social and community life, which revolves around the ways a person lives, works, plays and learns, and how these relate to the person's health. And the factors include civic participation, discrimination, incarceration, conditions within a workplace. Doc mentioned bullying um, on the job. And the neighborhood, which considers a person's housing and environment and the role they play in the person's health. And the factors here are quality of housing, transportation, access to healthy foods, water quality, crime and violence, all of which were covered by Doc this evening, the social determinants of health. Folks, they're very important. And um, as Doc always say, I really hope that there's something here that you can you can take. So, Doc, before I, I, I say my final two pence, I'll, I'll give you a minute just to make your closing remarks. Because uh, next week, we will be looking at the some aspect of the commercial determinants, yes? Yes, indeed. So, Doc, your, your, your final thoughts. Um, like I just said, let's get off the, the crazy merry-go-round and see where I am. How do I... How do I? It, it, it comes to you, and I, it, I'm not. Everybody has a responsibility to determine where uh, different people are, different places in this health panacea, this health picture. Where am I? Do I need to go and get my checks? Do I need to? Um, is my health center servicing me? Serving me? If it's not, what recommendations will I make? How would I do? I, am I going to have? Am I going to go to those those consultations that they have? Or am I going to let people think they know everything go and then cost when I'm the one who experiences it? We are doing a childhood obesity consultation to develop a policy, and this was in 2019. We're supposed to have done it the year, in, in, in end of the year, just before COVID, and. Um, the teachers won't work to rule. So the teachers won't. We wanted children as part of the contributors to this. And the children couldn't come. So, so I said, no, you can't do a childhood obesity um, policy and don't have children. They didn't understand what the challenges are. And in January 2020, 2020 just before a couple of weeks, six weeks before shutdown, we had a consultation, 98 people, and probably... 12, 14 of them were children. It's all the difference in the world. They knew what the challenges were. They were there to instruct us. So I'm saying we all have to participate in the development of this of this this healthy space. Guys, we are 100,000 people, I tell you guys. Perfect study group. We are 100,000 people. 
We still have the best quality air on this side of the world. God is good. Stop burning coals and burning bush. I beg you guys, it will improve. Okay? Um, we don't have what happens with, we don't have control over what happens with, with Sahara dust, but we do have control over cutting down trees and um, especially by the river bank and cutting down trees at all and not planting stuff. And so let's let's control that. Let's let's all figure out where am I and what am I required to do? I can tell you what you're required to do. You're required to start looking at how healthy you are, right? Um, where can I get care? If I need X, where do I get it? Because <laughs> the truth is, it's still your right. Okay? Collectively, we're going to look at what are the challenges out there. And next, we're going to talk about commercial determinants because there are lots of mitigating factors, a lot of factors that, that act against us, right? and act against us in a big way. And not, not just us, because I listen to all of these blogs from, well, these webinars and stuff from, from a place like Massachusetts, where they do a lot of research and people have money, okay? Um, I lived in a community where 80% of the people, 90% of the people had a first degree, 60% had a, had a master's degree, and probably another 20% had PhDs and doctorates. So, but they have the same challenges. They have challenges, right? A health insurance in the U.S. is a business. I don't know if we can make it a business here. We only have 100,000 people, but we must have a safety net where all of us can be equally healthy once we come together and develop a system. Let's not break it down. Let's see how we can make it better when it's approached, right? But everybody has to contribute mentally, right? Everybody has to support his brother and sister in a small community. Everybody has to strive towards making our community healthier. Everybody has to come together. Sorry. Together and insist that, um, sorry, it's just very windy, and insist that our health system is developed. We have to work with the government. We have to work with the services that we have. And we, as physicians and as people who give care, have to make sure that we know what we're doing. We have to make sure that we can support people that we can give them the care they deserve. If you're not happy with what your doctor say, go ask somebody else, okay? We have a responsibility to give you the best, to make sure that you can live as long as you can, all right? So don't be afraid to go out and see. Don't be afraid to be part of the discussion. Talk about it in church, talk about it in school, talk about it, um, talk about, I know the, the children's health, the, uh, the school health program is coming back on. What is there, what is expected? Don't say, oh, this takes too much long, the question's too long, this takes too much time. No, we need to know all of these things, right? We need to be able to, to, to follow somebody from birth until they die to understand how they have done while looking at the changes that we've made, right? Are they for better or for worse uh, over, over the lifespan of the person? Look, the bottom line is that we can do it, okay? We have enough educated people in this country. We need to probably have a 98% literacy rate. So some of us would be able to be fooling to stop behaving like we don't no sense. Okay? Because we know. We can understand. We can read and write. What you don't understand, ask. You may not agree with it, but you have to be able to discern whether it is good or bad for your community. All right? Don't say, X say I mustn't do this. Don't say, this people say, oh, vaccine does give you this and vaccine does give you that. Okay? Vaccine is why we, a lot of us, live today. All right? So look for, look for truth and, and be a part of what this is. Because we can do this, all of us together. Yeah, thank you, thank, thank you, <clears throat> thank you, thank you very much, Doc. Um, just my closing remarks. I, I just want to switch gear a little bit, and I, I want to just follow up because I think you, you, one of your statements, has sort of put everything into context. Um, you know, making reference to medical personnel need to give their best so that someone can live long enough. I just want to refer to a situation. <clears throat> Two days ago, a patient with stroke-like symptoms goes to Princess Alice has hospital. Thank you. And the patient is sent to St. George's one day later because the determination could not be made by the doctor in charge and the other doctor. And the patient is sent to do what they said is a troponin test. The doc, you would probably know better. The doctor is a, a troponin test, the test that's done to determine whether it's 
whether it's damage to the heart tissue. Right. Heart right. So the patient on oxygen support is sent to St. George's this morning to get the test done. Then sent back up to Princess Alice Hospital after the test was done to determine that the patient has to come back down to General Hospital this evening because, open in the sky. because Princess Alice could not handle it. The patient gets to St. George's, the General Hospital. The patient is unresponsive. And then the consultant at the General Hospital rules out that the patient did not have a heart attack. What I don't understand is, why is it that a patient in that condition, stroke-like symptoms, has to come to St. George's, get a test done in the ambulance, on oxygen support, travel back up to Princess Alice, and then send back down to General Hospital to determine all of these things. Doc, can you help me? Um... Remember we talked about leadership? Remember we yes. talked about governance? Because mm -hmm. governance would include governance, how you how you run this thing, okay? Governance would include having proper risk management, understanding evaluation, having standards of care. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Having protocols that are to be followed. If a patient has X, Y, Z, there are um, things. So it, inclu it, it includes one, setting up policy and standards okay and, and 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 algorithms what do i do if you're coming on your left eye cross to the right side um what should i do if it crosses back on its own what should i do do you understand what it may be blah 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 um we need to have those but again it must be information that's disseminated throughout and then you need to have in every place where there's a first contact somebody who's able to say look Here's what it is. There must be communication between Princess Alice, doctor, and because if you want, if you want a blood test, you can take the blood and send the lab, send the ambulance to the blood. You don't need to have the patient there, okay? So, and am I going to send a patient who I suppose may be having a stroke? Am I going to send them to St. George's and ask the internist, who is the specialist in that area, to take a peek because of my suspicion, right? Um, I may not be able to make a determination. I don't know why a troponin was done, but people can have a stroke after having a heart attack because of, they have clots and stuff. So that's a different story. But I'm saying, unless we have protocols and ways of, we're going to always have those problems. And unless we, who give, prim, who give care, direct care, are aware of what this is, we're going to have these challenges. And, and, and I'm very sorry to hear of this. I'm very sorry to and hear this. You, you know, and, and, and Doc, what I'm telling you here, this is, this is usually when I make statements like these, um, these are not statements that I pull out from the air. I have the facts. Now, after the patient... I don't know, I don't know how the communication was. No, no, I, I'm uh, just saying, after the patient arrived um, back at Princess Alice, the family practically had to insist... And it got to a point where um, it got a little loud. And that's when, in fact, the family insisted that the doctor in charge of Princess Alice come in to give some explanation because information was scarce. And it was until the point where the family members started to get a little loud that the other doctor, a female doctor, started to give some information and then contacted the consultant in the general hospital to get information and and when these things happen Again, look, that's a that's a that's a governance issue here people that's an issue who determines how the system is run yes indeed okay. and 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 the thing about look th these are serious things because when you and, and I guess we have to understand when somebody has a family member who is in a situation and they're looking at that family member, a mother or father or aunt, and you are scared that you may lose that person 
they get to a point where they probably expect the doctor to work a miracle. But information is critical. And up to the point yeah, and, and up to the point of the the patient being sent back to General Hospital, the doctor in charge of Princess Alice did not show up. That's a governance issue. Did not show up. And it is upsetting. It is annoying. And you know, you, you, you hear these things time and time again. And so you do wonder you know, what is happening. Do you know that, that physicians who communicate with their patients, right, do not get sued? Did you know that? That's a statistic. That's been determined by scientific evidence, right? The doctor who has a common, who has a conversation. Look, we don't know everything, okay? Sometimes we don't know anything, but we certainly don't know everything. And um, you need to see, I'm we're trying to figure out what's going on here, because there's not, not, nothing... Most of the cases are not just, you know, people are severely ill and not clear, you know. You, you, sometimes you have to wonder. And you may, you may diagnose one thing, but there are other things, right? And whether or not the patient has been negligent, that's not your business. Your business is to really take care of the patient and make sure you can preserve long, life as long as you can. That's what I think. Um, we, have to, we have to not be subjective. Just as how we don't want patients, relatives to be subjective with us, we have a responsibility to understand. You can say, I don't know. Trust me. I'm not sure what's going on here. Let me work this out. Help me out. I, I'm very sorry to hear this, though, because um, families grieve a lot. Um, of course. I'm talking about death grief. I'm talking about grief, whether they, they feel they come to the source. And we have to understand, those of us who give help care have to understand, when a person comes to you, it's because he doesn't know as much as you do, and he expects you to solve this problem. Definitely. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can partially. Sometimes you um, you 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 can completely, but you must never want. Doc, thank you so very much um, for um, being here. Um, it was, I mean, it's so good to have you back, and um, I can't wait for next Tuesday as we continue our discussion, looking at the commercial um, aspect of this thing. So, thank you, folks, for staying with us. It was indeed a pleasure. Be sure to join us next Tuesday for another episode of Doctor and Call. Have a good night. All the best. Nice to talk to you.